All right, welcome back to the Metasploitable tutorial. In this one, we're going to go ahead and see if we can exploit SSH. Now, this one, SSH is a fairly secure uh, protocol, and it's used to remote control another computer or give yourself a, a command shell on another computer from a distant location so you can control it. Um, we're going to go ahead and use a brute force technique for this. So go ahead and do a little research, see if you can figure out how to brute force this SSH session on our Metasploitable machine. And we'll be right back. All right, if you figured out how to brute force SSH, congratulations. That's awesome. I'm going to show you how to do it here the way that I know how. We're going to use an auxiliary Metasploit module to brute force this. And the one that we're going to use is auxiliary slash scanner slash SSH slash SSH underscore login. If we show the options on this one, uh, then you can see we, we need a few things. So the, the port is already set correct, 22. We can set usernames and that sort of thing. All these ones that say yes, those are required. So we need to set our hosts to our uh, Metasploitable VM. So we give it the IP address. And then we also want to set this one here. For some reason, this one is set to false, but we want verbose on. And that'll show us output as it's working. We'll set that to true. And we're going to go ahead and we'll set the stop on success to true as well. You might not always want to do that one, but in this case, we'll go ahead and do that. And we also need a text file with lists of usernames right here user pass uh, nope where's the user file user file file containing usernames one per line so we need one of those and we also need password file pass file here file containing passwords one per line I have a user file here and I also have a pass file here. If you I'll show you what's in them real quick. So just one per line. I've got four usernames in here. And I've got a few passwords, one per line in the password file. Now I just created these for the this demonstration, and as we can see here, we already know. MSF admin is a good username and the password is MSF admin. So we know this is going to work. This is just for demonstration purposes. There are a lot of good username lists and password lists on the internet and I suggest you search for those and download a few. Um, they're very handy. You can start creating your own as well, but that can be very time consuming. It's good to start with something that somebody else has already created. There's some really big ones, really good ones out there. And so in this exploit, we're not necessarily exploiting this uh, flaw in the service of SSH, but we are basically hoping that somebody did not use uh, a good enough password. So a lot of people will use password as their password or their username as their password, as we can see here, or, you know, in this case, root and password tours just root backwards or ASDF JKL uh, semicolon is just the home row on the keyboard stuff like that and good password files will have all this stuff and way more and different variations like see this is password but with a couple changes so if somebody isn't using a strong password a password list is a really good way to weed that out really quick they are using good passwords, 
then good for them. This is not going to work in that case. So we have all that set. We need to set our user file is this one. And we need to set our pass file, which is this one. We can go ahead and run this. Now this is going to go ahead and it's going to, as you can see here, it's trying the username user and the password tour, and that didn't work. So it's moving on to the next one. See these failed ones? Once it gets to that MSF admin, MSF admin, it should succeed and it should stop. Now you don't necessarily always want it to stop because if you have multiple passwords or multiple usernames and passwords that are going to work, it might be helpful to uh, get as many as you can because then uh, you might get a, an unprivileged user with access, but if you can get one that has more privileges, then that's better. You can do more things. So we can see here it worked. So success here, MSF admin, MSF admin. So assuming that we didn't know that before, now we can just do SSH MSF admin at our IP address. And it's going to ask for the password. And now we know it is MSF admin. And boom. Now we are on the Metasploitable machine. All right, and another thing is there are ways to figure out lists of usernames that are on the machine depending on some things that are open and available. And we might get into that a little bit later. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.